When working with layers inside of SpeedEdit, you work in the timeline, and we have unlimited layers of audio, unlimited layers of video, and we don't have any specific tracks that we work with, we can just layer the media up, and again, we have unlimited tracks, and it gives us a lot of freedom to work within the editor. So, let's go ahead and find a piece of footage that we want to use as our backdrop, and I'm going to go in and just find an animated backdrop to use here, and I'm going to throw it into the storyboard, comes into the timeline right where I want it. I'm going to hit the G key to expand it to its full length, and uh, I'm going to get rid of the audio track off of it. So I've just got this animated background happening. Now, I want to start layering this, and I want to do some compositing. So I'm going to bring this down a couple of tracks, and again, in Speed Edit, you're looking from the bottom up. So whatever's on the top, the topmost layer is your back plane, and everything else is layered on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and find a piece of video. Let's just use the balloon video that we were using before. We'll bring that in and let's take a look at what's happening here. If you look at the timeline, you can see that part of the balloon clip is dark and part of it is light. And the part that's dark is the part that's obscured by this other video clip. Because we don't have overlay turned on, it's actually blocking it out and you'll see that animated background until you get beyond it and then it will turn back into the balloon so that's our first layer stack that we have going on there and if we want to create an actual layered effect where you can see both things the first thing that we can do is we can adjust the alpha channel or the transparency of this foreground layer so with the foreground layer selected here I'm gonna go ahead to the control tree and inside of the control tree we have a variety of different controls for that layer one of which being layer fading so inside of layer fading I do have an alpha control right now it's set to 255 and there's a little knob here you can grab it and spin it I'm gonna send it down to about 119 now I still can't see through it because we have not told the editor that we want to turn on the transparency for this layer and we can do that right down here we can either click on overlay or we can hit the Y key and notice that as soon as we do that the dark area overlay is off and it's dark overlay is on and it's light and we can now see through it and as we scrub the project you can see both of the layers at the same time we can also adjust our transparency over here in real time get real time feedback of what that's going to look like on the output this is still playing in real time no background rendering has been happening yet we're up to two layers of HD now I've set the transparency level or the alpha channel level back to 255 which makes it completely opaque so now we can only see the animated background and anytime we're working inside of the control tree area here and you have a control that has a little dot by it that means that this control can be animated so let's say we wanted to have the transparency of our overlay change over time well, I could come to the very first frame. Again, I'll click on it and hit Q to get me the first frame, and I'll create a keyframe. And then I'll come out a ways, and I'll go ahead and dial it back. And you see that it automatically created another keyframe. We'll turn on overlay here, and now you can see that we're dissolving our overlay over time. And we're using the keyframes here inside of the control tree to do it. Anytime in Speed Edit that you set up any type of animation, you've created keyframes. And these keyframes can be viewed as splines. Uh, I'm on the splines tab right here, and again, I've got the animated background selected, and this background does have some keyframes adjusting its alpha channel here in the beginning. And if I go ahead and I put a tick mark here, and I'm on the splines tab, the splines show up. And I can now see as I drag through, the two keyframes that are being used. We've got a keyframe right here at 255 and a keyframe right here at 79.2. And I have the ability to adjust this keyframe by dragging it up and down. I can adjust the level of the keyframe and I can also adjust when it happens in time by dragging it backwards and forwards. Whenever we deal with any type of spline, you do have the ability to put ease in and ease out on things as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and left click over here so nothing is selected and then left click and drag out a box I have that keyframe selected and I'm going to apply an ease in you can see I get a nice ease in motion on that keyframe now could also come back let's click over here to deselect and click on that keyframe and we can do an ease out 
and now this gives me a beautiful S curve as we come through our animation. I want to get rid of all of the transparency and an easy way for me to do that is to just left click and drag out a box over all of the splines and hit delete. And this removes all of the animation and sets me back to 255. Let's go ahead and do a picture in picture. Uh, we'll swap the positions of the layers. We'll put the balloon layer on the bottom here. And we removed all of the uh, alpha channel from the top layer. Let's go to the balloon layer and let's turn on overlay. We'll hit Y so now we can see through it. But it's full screen so we don't see anything except the balloon even though overlay is turned on. Now let's go to the positioning window. And again, in the positioning window here, depending upon where you are, you'll get different controls. So I'm going to come down to the corner and select size with the left mouse button. I'm going to size it back and you can see on our output that we are seeing through. We're creating a nice picture-in-picture -picture effect here. I'm going to go ahead and size that down just a little bit further. Now one of the controls that you have is smoothing and I'm going to left click and drag smoothing and push it in and that gives me nice soft edges. And I'm just going to move this over here in the corner and I've created a nice picture-in-picture -picture effect here. Now let's say we want to put another one in here. Go ahead and grab another piece of video drag it down below. I'm going to get rid of its audio. I'll hit the audio and hit delete. I'm going to hit Y to turn on overlay. And let's go to the positioner. Now as soon as I put this in here with overlay, you'll see that we start to see this line happening down here. And this is our background render. Let's go ahead and shrink this down. Let's give it a nice smooth edge. And let's move it over here in the corner and now you can see the background render happening. So we told the preferences anything over two layers of HD in an HD project and give me a background render and that's what it's doing down here. Now the nice thing about the background render is it doesn't stop me from working. Even while it's rendering I can make changes to in and out points, I can scrub the project, I can continue to do what I want to do in the editor and whenever I stop working then the render takes over and it completes what it needs to do in the background so that once that red line is completely gone on and it's completely yellow it's showing me this is my rendered section uh, we can play that and it'll play back perfectly because it's been rendered for us. When you're doing a render inside of an edit sometimes this part of the edit might not be visible. We could have this shrunk down and we could even have it off the screen but you can also see any part of the project that's rendering right here above your transport controls. So even if a render is happening off screen you'll be able to see it. Once the line above the transport controls turns completely blue, you know that everything's ready for playback. Let's go ahead and animate these picture-in-picture uh, -picture videos coming onto the screen. I'm going to go ahead and start out with the balloon. And I'm going to hit the Q key, which will get me to the first frame when I've got the balloon clip selected. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and move out a little bit here. And right about there is where I want the balloon to be on screen and come to rest. So I'm going to give it a keyframe and I'm going to give it an ease into position. And then we'll go back to the beginning, we'll hit Q and we'll grab the clip and I can constrain the movement of the clip on an axis by holding down shift. So I'll hold down shift and I'll just drag that clip off the side of the screen here. And we're going to get a re-render happening because we've made a change. And then once that's completed, we'll go ahead and play this and we'll see what the result looks like. So you saw we have our one clip flying on the screen, but it's flying on pretty quickly. So again, I can make a change to that pretty easily with the splines. If I go to my splines and I want to look at the 3D position, here's the X, the Y, and the B Z position, I can see where they start and where they end. And if I want it to take longer, if I want it to come onto the screen slower, I can grab all three of these keyframes and again hold down shift and I can move them in time. And now when we play this back, you'll see that the picture-in-picture picture comes on the screen a lot slower. Now let's go ahead and set up animation for the second picture-in-picture. Picture. We'll click on that one and go to the positioner. And again, I'm going to hit Q and I'm going to come in a little ways. And I'm going to make a keyframe. That's where I want it to stop with an ease in. Now I'll hit Q and we'll go ahead and hold down Shift and drag this one off the screen the other way. It's coming on very fast as well. 
so I can always go to splines, select these splines, hold shift, and drag them out. Let's play this. And plays no problem. Now, you may have noticed that I was able to play that even though I had a red line. So even though the computer said, hey, I want to render this, it was able to play it. And I do have a pretty beefy computer here, so I could go into preferences and I could raise the level. I could say, you know, after three streams of HD, start the background render. So uh, again, it's about playing with your machine and finding the sweet spot for performance for the particular hardware that you have.